Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer, welcome back to Farming Simulator 19, and welcome back to Shamrock Valley with Seasons. Man, I've recorded this video, I'm not kidding, three times today. We've moved ahead a little bit, because every time I decide one of these videos is really just not working and start over, we're that much further ahead in our day. It's still day one of our first day on our new farm. I didn't get rid of Gazelsburg, I didn't delete it or anything, I just... Uh, Wanted to try something new, so here we are. So we did buy some sheep. We're going to try Merino sheep on this map. I did get the pipe installed. I figured out how to do this. And we still have the Animal Keeper mod installed, but we're not going to use it. We've got the water already taken care of, and I believe this map has the ability to for the animals to eat grass that's in the field. But I think there has to be grass in the field for them to do that. And at the moment, field six, which is where our sheep are, if we turn the grass on, this grass is growing, but it's not, you know what I mean? And I think that's the, that's the rub. I think the grass has to be harvestable for it to count as food. So first thing we're going to do is go buy more sheep. Then we're going to come back and check on our workers. And then the last thing we're going to do is probably feed these animals and if we still have time we'll go back to the yard and do a little housekeeping so how's everybody doing it's monday for me it's tuesday for you and as i whoa no no don't don't hit the trailer with the gate it's been man it is a monday it is really a monday monday has been absolutely kicking my ass in all ways so it doesn't surprise me that this video has been a bit of a struggle uh, what did we do? Well, I can't say off camera because we were on camera, but what did we do that was not usable? Well, we fertilized our fields, some with slurry, some with hard manure. We cultivated. We've actually got a tractor on a subsoiler right now, so we're getting the plow buff and we're also getting the uh, cultivated field finish, right? We've got another tractor seeding grass of all things and i'll tell you why we're putting grass in those arable fields as we get a little further down here so yep i fertilized i subsoiled and i brought up the first load of sheep i don't know I, something's been something's been really off with me lately i think i'm just burned out and that sounds like such a self-indulgent you know like such a, a first world problem to have um i'm kind of burned out you know but it, it i think it does happen just a little burned out. Overthinking things, making things more difficult than they need to be. So yeah, man, let's just record a farm video. It's no big deal. It's a piece of cake. Do it all the time. And we can certainly do it one more time today. So yep, and um, I wanna try something new. Now this map was out for 17. I, as I was prowling around and doing a little research on it, I found YouTube videos of people playing this map in 17. And I missed it somehow. I'm a little bit surprised because it is my favorite kind of map and it is by one of my favorite map makers. Somehow I missed it. And I think what may have happened is several Irish maps came out about the same time for 17. And I know I tried one of them and I found it to be a little gimmicky. It had an island and a ferry and, you know, just seemed, uh, didn't quite do it for me. And there was another one that was very good, but it, was really an FPS killer. And I think it's possible that Shamrock Valley came out at the same time as those and just got sort of, for me anyway, just got sort of lost in the sauce of, you know, a lot of Irish maps came out around the same time and none of them were, were really workable for me. And so I lost sight of this one. But it's a fantastic map and I guess it's it's been converted to 19, but it's not new for 19. So if I gave that impression, in the previous video, I do apologize. Looking for some triggers, we took our, uh, I got a Sulky Progress Seeder. We've been using the Sulky Zeos on some of our other maps. We're using the Sulky Progress on this map. I looked around the yard and did not find triggers for fertilizer or seed, but I'm gonna look again because an Oxygen David map always has triggers for fertilizer and seed. So we'll need to find those. I think they're there. I mean, it's not guaranteed. He could have tried something new and there are no triggers, but I ran the skid steer. Don't tell the council. I ran the skid steer down the highway and picked up a pallet and very quickly came back. And you know, I don't know if you would do that in real life. It's sort of not that big a deal. You know, in farm country, you've got slow moving vehicles and 
and farm vehicles and farm traffic on roads and the people in that area know that you know many of the people in an area like this are farmers themselves i would assume or or at least have a very clear understanding that this is farm country so the idea of seeing a slow moving vehicle you know it's not the end of the world and so that does make me wonder if you could if you could do that because the alternative i mean it takes just a minute or so to hop in the skid steer drive down to the store and pick up a pallet the alternative would be either in farm sim or in real life the alternative would be hooking a tractor up to a, a trailer driving down to the store i guess we would need to get a skid steer down there as well not necessarily they probably have one down there to load up for you and then take it back to the wherever you need to go and then unload it right and that's you're talking 20 minutes half an hour time is money man time is money so i don't i don't know that i mean i've worked in industrial environments before i've worked in commercial environments before and i know the idea of cutting a corner to save half an hour is it's not just the sort of thing that's that's tolerated but if you're working for somebody if you've got a boss that's the sort of thing that you know if you're hooking up a trailer and your boss sees you and comes over and says what the hell are you doing and you say i gotta go pick up a pallet of seed the kinds of bosses that i had when i worked in environments like that i never worked on a farm but in an industrial environment the kinds of bosses that i had would look at you like you were crazy it's a man getting the getting the bobcat and just be quick about it you know wait till there's no traffic make sure there's no cops and just drive across the highway so i don't know what a farmer would do in real life i i, I could easily see either one of those scenarios being appropriate you know where it's it really is just across the highway just take care of business son we're trying to run trying to run an enterprise here and then i could also just as easily see it as like no you would never do that it's irresponsible it's illegal and it's uh just something that makes you not a good neighbor you know not a good member of your community so i'm curious but for me personally here on this sim farm we just hopped over there in the in the bobcat in the skid steer and picked up those pallets got them loaded up uh, we are, I mean, you can see here this trailer and you'll see back at the farm. We do have a lot of 4D mods. I think as appropriate as they are on a UK map, they are even more appropriate on a British map. <laughs> British map, God. It's, this day, man, this Monday. There, oh God. It's so inappropriate and offensive what I just said. I know it is and I, I it was a slip of the tongue, I swear. As appropriate as 4D mods are on a UK map, they are even more appropriate on an Irish map. God, I, I spent part of my childhood in London. My father lives just north of London. I lived in Glasgow. I, I really do take seriously the difference between the UK and the British Isles and Britain and Ireland. I know, it's, it's, it all gets lumped together but there are very significant and meaningful differences between those places, and I know that. I worked with a, a guy from Wales in the United States. He was from Wales. And another guy that we worked with continuously referred to him as English, and I thought it was gonna end in a fist fight. I really did, so, oh, oh dear. So I know how, how big a deal that is, and I do apologize sincerely. That honestly was slip of the tongue. Uh, yeah, mea culpa. Anyway, as appropriate as 4D mods are on a UK style map, even more so on a map like this. So yeah, we got a ton of them as always. Plus they're just damn good mods. They really, really are. They're gorgeous. And uh, we've got the Chieftain trailer rather than the Broan that we've been using on other maps. And uh, yeah, let's just keep it small. I, You can see on this trailer, this man, what is going on with me? I... Wow, something's, something's not right in my world. I need more coffee or less coffee, I don't know. This little uh, Massey Ferguson that we're in, we had knocking tires on it. I swapped them out for Trelleborg and I added some weights to the Agra bumper that we have on the front. And I also uh, bumped up the horsepower from 110 to 135. So we do have three tractors now and they are all about 
140 to 150 horsepower. It's going to be challenging with these hills, but that's going to be our cap. And in the past, you know, for me, low horsepower was like 200 to 250. And on this map, it's going to be sort of a hard stop at 150. And we'll see how, how we're able to do all that. So this is our trailer. So we'll get these all unloaded. Our animals do have water from that little pipe that we installed. But we are still going to need to give them some food. Uh, if I put this right here, can we get... Yeah, we can get the bobcat through there. So, set the brake. Yeah, I don't know what is going on. And you think this is bad. The, the videos that I recorded this morning were so much worse that I deleted them and started over. Like, it, yeah, right? If this is unacceptable... How much worse that right so we go here let's go uh up to field three first and take a look at our 1455 i did get a 1455 sir i did get a 1455 if you're going to run case on a map you got to have a 1455 so i got one of those going i think we're going to go with three tractors i think we are you just get so much more done with two workers and yourself doing things, particularly sort of tedious stuff. Like we've got the 1455, you'll see it up here on a 2.8 meter subsoiler. Oy, that is gonna take a minute because field three is, it's not big, but it's not small. But the idea of doing that manually, oh, that is daunting. You know what I mean? That would be, that'd be a long, slow farm sim session. To be able to put it on a worker is fantastic. And then we've also got a three meter, this that sulky progress on the other side. So that's two workers using three meter equipment. We're being realistic, but we're not doing those things manually. And that's certainly saving me a little bit of brain strain, as they say. So yeah, got that view though. Unreal. Very nice map. Can't believe I missed it for 17, right? There's our... 1455 and this is the uh, the Dondi yeah subsoiler and it leaves the cultivated texture as all subsoilers do so we're getting the plow bonus and we're also leaving a nice smooth finish on the field although the uh, that sulky has a power harrow built into it so even if we did leave a plow texture right just a plowed field we could still get directly into it with that and I did, I did decide to go grass. We're planting grass in these two fields. I mean, obviously this one, not yet, but we will momentarily. And we're gonna do just one big silage harvest. We're gonna ferment it in the bunker at our farm. And then we're gonna take it down and sell it at the BGA that we own. I think that makes the most sense. We'll then put in winter canola, most likely. And yeah, it, it's, the soil temperature right now is four degrees. Grass germinates at three degrees. And I want to say canola germinates at like five degrees. So we're, we're a little bit safer, right? Less likely to lose any crop to frost. And we also won't have to rent a combine harvester straight away. We'll need to get a mower and a rake and a some kind of trailed forager and a trailer regardless to bring in silage we just won't need to have the additional ten thousand euro expense of renting a combine harvester so i think that makes sense first off even though like i said i got i got a little sick of silage on gazelsburg burned out on that one of the many things i seem to be burned out on but even though I said that, now we're going to do the same thing here. Eh, it's just different. It's just different. I don't exactly think these things through. You know that. So we'll go up here. We'll check on our Puma. You say Puma? You say Puma. We'll check on our Puma. See how they're doing. Uh, are they... Looks like they may be finishing up on lengths and getting into headland already. Yeah, sure enough. Okay. Okay. So they'll be done momentarily. Beautiful. And that's the, I guess the smaller of the two 
sulky cedars. Compared to the Zeos, it's probably two-thirds the size. So a little bit more manageable because we are sticking with that lower horsepower requirement. So we'll head over to the main farm. I'll show you some of the kit that I bought. I, I mean, I certainly found places on the farm that seem like they could be triggers, but I couldn't get them to fill. And it could just be that that sulky can only fill from pallets. Who knows? Once you get into mods, you know what I'm saying? All bets are off. You got no guarantees anymore. You never know what's going to happen. Right, so we'll park this up right here. And this hasn't been working too hard, so we can shut the motor off like so. Carefully back up. This is the Chieftain trailer that we got. If you know 4D modding, really, you don't even need to know 4D modding. It's just a fantastic mod. It really, really is. It's, it's the same quality as everything else that they do, but if you're not familiar with it, that's it. And no auto load. So that's another reason I want to use a trailed forager rather than bailing and man, the idea of stacking that many bales manually. Daunting. So like this thing right here it has the logo for fertilizer. I don't know. Is that a trigger as well? I know I can check with F5. I don't want to do it on camera because it'll really tear up the frame rate. This is seed. I didn't get a trigger for it. So I'll prowl around here and see. But I did have to get pallets over at the store, like I said, run them up here right quick and fill up that little sulky. So that is that. And then right on the other side is, oh yeah, of course. I went with the smaller slurry sprayer. I was told that the one that I have on Greenwich, the two axle is way too big and it's actually only used for transpo and not for spraying because it is so massively big. And even this one, you know, the smaller of the two, the single axle, when you see a tractor next to it and then imagine a human person standing next to that tractor, this thing is massive. It's gigantic. And then this as well. And we're doing everything in red. Although the Massey red and the international red are just slightly different, we're going to have everything on this map red. It's been a while. We've done, what, Deutz and Kloss on Gazelsberg, and we've done... Uh, we tested John Deere on Ellenbach, and we've got Ford and New Holland on Greenwich. So yeah, it's been a minute. Let's see if I can get this at just the right angle to let me back out. Like so, carefully, beautiful. Just gonna drop that right there. So we'll head over to the store, we'll buy a single pallet of hay, take it across the highway, drop it off for the sheep, and that should be, because we're at about 20 minutes right now, that should be just about perfect. And this, yeah, I mean, you, I think you see what I'm saying, like, from our, from our driveway to the store, that's no more than 150 yards. Would you? Would you? I, I know you're not supposed to, this thing doesn't even have a registration plate on it. But would you? I think I probably would. Right, and um, what else? We're at 54000 We haven't borrowed any money yet. We do still need to get a mower and a rake. Neither of those are too expensive. We need to get a baler. That is going to be uh, kind of expensive. Not the end of the world. And a trailer. Uh, I don't know. Maybe we'll sell a tractor. Maybe we'll try to do it with two tractors. You know what I wouldn't mind doing at some point? Just trying to do an entire map with one tractor. I think that might slow it down a little bit too much to make for good videos. Right, so we go here, we go here, skid steer, bale spear, don't mind if I do, like so, and then we want one hay bale. Pretty sure I can fit this next to the trailer, between the hedge and the trailer. Let's hope. Right. All right. Speared, and here we go. Now I got the skid steer because on Greenwich, 
our Ford 40, even with a, a big rear weight, still really struggles picking out pallets. Bales, it's okay. One bale, two bales, no problem. The 1,000 liter pallets, it's okay. The 2,000 liter pallets, it really, really struggles. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of stoppies. Quickly, yep. You never even saw me. So I did go with the skid steer. It's half the size of the telehandler. It's perfect for getting into sheds for mucking out, even though I don't think we're gonna have any cows on this map for quite a while, if ever. So I think this thing is a good alternative. And I mean, half the size and half the price as well. So that works for me. Let's put this right here. Set the brake, look at this guy. He's making his escape already. See, look at that look in his eye. He's like, is that gate open for me? Oh, that's right. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. You're staying. All right, now, next question is, does this map have the bail trigger? Or do we need a shredder? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I think we might. Give it one more try. Uh-huh. So it does have the trigger. That's interesting. We let's see what's left of this bale. Uh, we use just about a thousand liters. Interesting. Hang on for a second. So we'll set the brake. And oh, I so said we'll set the brake. We'll jump in cab and we'll set the brake. Let's go back here. Yeah, 1,064 liters to fill the trough. Okay. And now over here, this is curious because I just filled this thing this morning and now it's half full. Do I have to fill it again? Or is it over here now? Okay. I guess we need to tend to, to that thing during the day. All right. Um, I guess I'll take this, because it's raining, I'll take this bale back to the barn. And that will be, I think, just about 30 minutes. And we'll figure out what to do about Gazelsburg. I don't know. We'll figure out what to do about everything. Me and you, together, we'll sort it out. I like Gazelsburg. I didn't delete my save game. But... My goodness, we make some silage on that map. A little variety wouldn't hurt my feelings. Right back in here. You know that gate just about flipped this thing over. I don't know if you caught that. That would be par for the course on this day. Right. Closing the gate. Hop right back in here. Here we go. I have no idea where wolf spawns with the sheep meadow being sort of a, you know, kind of a standalone operation. I have no idea where those pallets will, will eventually end up. I mean, we'll find them. I just have no idea. I'm curious. And um, yeah, I think that's about it. So next episode, I mean, we can skip ahead a couple days and maybe even be, God. Maybe be even to mowing grass. Yeah. Because we don't do enough of that. But I mean, it's farm sim. You got to expect that we're going to be doing farm stuff. So, yeah. I mean, I'll just keep buying sheep. I don't want to spend all of our money and then not have enough to buy equipment. Maybe we'll do this. Maybe we'll buy some, uh, some kit. We'll buy a mower and a rake and a trailed forager. moment there we go and we'll see what's left over and with what's left over we'll buy animals like so set the brake engine off and 24 minutes but we've got the puma puma pioma it's done so let's run up there we'll take that off course play and then we'll call it all right good so
It's going to be a lot of grass. A lot of grass when this is all done. And I think, yeah, we do own the BGA. Right, let's, we'll take this off course plate. We'll check that. So we go, hmm. It's interesting. I think maybe, I think maybe I'll fix that manually. All right, course plate, here we go. All right, delete that. Delete that. There we go. And then if we look here on the map, BGA is down here. Yep, we do own it. Now, I'm curious about something. Like, if we wanted to sell Field 2, we could sell that. But if we sold, like, say, this area here, yeah, that would that's like the whole rest of the map. You see what I mean? I mean, we could sell it. But it's not like you could sell the BGA like as a, as a standalone thing. No, that's not what I wanted. Right? If we sell the BGA, then we sell everything for $0. Okay, that's cool. But we, the important thing is we do own the BGA. So we can take silage from our pit down there and sell it straight away. Okay, good to know. Hang on, I'm going to have a sip of my soda. Perfect. Folks, thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Farming Simulator 19. Shamrock Valley with Seasons. We'll see you next time. Take care now.